morning, everybody. Let's try that one more time. Good morning, everybody. It's really good to be together in the house of God, worshiping together. As I was thinking about what I was going to say to welcome you to this place, I came across a thought. Sometimes we come to the temple expecting to receive something from God or expecting to just get something from the service. What am I going to get? We come with a consumer mentality. I want to transition that thought into the next one. The next one is how much is God getting from me today? How much am I surrendering to God today? It's a different type of thought, isn't it? Let's pray together. God, we recognize that it is because of you that we're here. We woke up this morning surrounded by our loved ones. Just blessed to know that we got breath in our lungs, that we are able to live in freedom. And God, sometimes uh, it's unfortunate that we don't recognize these blessings. And uh, that unthankfulness, sometimes we bring it to church. And we come with a consumer mentality. How, what am I going to get from you today? What am I going to get from the sermon, from the, from the music? God, but I pray that you will change our hearts and minds to ask the question, how much do you have of me today? God, I pray that as your people, we will worship you freely. That we will recognize who you are, what you've done, what you continue to do, and what you have promised. And that we will glory in that and we will sing to that, to that name, the beautiful name of Jesus Christ, our God and Savior. So as we engage in this music, I pray that as a, as a whole, as a family here and really living, that we will sing and worship your name. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. I had the privilege of singing our story, our song on the album. When Dustin and Chrissy and Jonathan brought this to the to the writing uh, the writing team, and they had um, they had meshed up this old hymn, uh, "Blessed Assurance, This is my story. This is my song." They started grooving on this uh, on this funky groove on the chorus. I was like, "Okay, this is a little different. This will be fun." Uh, but what caught me was how the lyrics uh, resonated with my with my own heart, my own spirit. With the bridge, um, nothing's gonna keep our voices silent. Nothing's gonna bind us, we are free. Nothing's gonna stop these hearts united. I just think about my life. I think about the lies that the enemy has told me uh, day in and day out. You are not good enough. Your failures will stop you. The things that you don't do well enough, that's gonna hinder you from doing anything. Uh, but what he forgets to tell you is the promise that God's already told us, that we are good enough that Christ paid the price. And so, man, that, that resonated and became a, an anthem and a prayer for me and my life. Um, God, I once, once bound by fear, uh, once lost in sin, but, but no longer, because you know why? This is my story, and this is my song, that Christ has redeemed, Christ died on the cross, and he saved me from my sin. And I hope and pray that this becomes a, a powerful story and a powerful prayer for you and your church and praise God for what he has done in our lives. This is our story. This, this 
14 to 16 says you are the light of the world a city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket but on a lampstand and it gives light to all who are in the house therefore let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your father in heaven he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love, in whom we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins. Light of the world, treasure. Tragedies 
this song fair is lord jesus beautiful hymn let's sing it together fair is lord jesus
together. You're my soul's glory. You're my soul's glory. You're my soul's glory. Sing it to him. You are. You're my soul's glory, joy, and love. Let's do it one more time. You're my soul's glory. You're my soul's glory. Bible says in Psalm 69 30 I will praise the name of God with a song and will magnify him with thanksgiving all taste and see that the Lord is good blessed is the man and also the woman who trusts in him let's sing this wonderful song hallelujah your love is so amazing if you have in your heart are reason to say hallelujah that his love is so amazing sing with us together this wonderful song let's sing together your love is amazing steady and unchanging your love is a mountain from beneath my feet. Your love, your love is a mystery. How you gently lift me when I am surrounded. Your love carries me. Hallelujah. 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 Your love makes me sing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, your love makes me sing. Sing together. Your love is surprising, I can feel it rising. All the joy that's growing deep inside of me. Every time, every time I see you, all your goodness shines through. I can feel this God song rising up in me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 your love makes me sing, yeah, hallelujah, 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 your love makes me sing, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's sing this together. Yes, yes, you make me sing. Oh, Lord, you make me sing, sing, sing. How you make me sing? Oh, Lord, you make me sing. Hallelujah, Hallelujah. Sing. Hallelujah. Let's sing it together. Hallelujah. 
now is the time for our garden of prayer. And I invite everybody who want who desire to come and pray with me to our God. So I just invite you to come. Our faithful Father, dear friend, unfailing love that will never, never let us go. Father, to come, we come this morning to worship you for who you are, for your grace, for your mercy, for your faithfulness, for not to treat us as the way we need to be treated. Instead of that, you give us grace, you give us mercy, you forgive our sin, Lord Jesus. Father, thank you, thank you again. Praise you for your long suffering, Lord Jesus, long suffering, patient with us, Lord Jesus. A God who never, never will let us go. We just praise you, Father. Father, this morning, we want to thank you. First thing, we have a church. First thing, we had two pastors. First thing, to thank you, Father, that for our brother and sister, that we could get together to worship you, to praise you. We thank you for food. We thank you for shelter. We thank you for we are the building to worship, Lord Jesus. We thank you again for your unfailing love, Jesus. And Father, any time we think about your love, that love will make you living your throne of glory. That love will make you come to that earth to live among us, to see who we are, to see our all we are lost, to see everything. Despite whatever we did to you, your unfailing love is still the same, Father. Because love is the power of God. It's a love who bring you to save us, Lord Jesus. Forever, Father, teach us to be thankful. Open our mind to the powerful Holy Spirit that we could understand who you are, Father. Because sometimes we don't really see who you are. We don't see your heart of mercy, your heart of, your heart of mercy, your heart of kindness, your heart of patience. We don't see them. So, Father, to come this morning with praising to you, Jesus. Father, you come this morning. We have a need. When we be in heaven, he will praise all the time. But in that earth, Father, there is need. Father, first thing I pray for our church, each member in our church. You know us by name. We pray for the visitor who is visiting Lord Jesus. And I pray, Father, like the people who are sick, Father, that some said, it's you who heal our disease, and I pray to touch them, Lord. You know, the person who is sick with depression, anxiety, and people who suffer from all kinds of sickness, Lord Jesus, this morning I lift them to you, Father, and I pray for them. And I pray to for people who are carrying burden, People who don't have the joy of salvation, Lord Jesus. Father, you said in your presence, there is fullness of joy. That's what you said. You said you live in the presence of people, Lord Jesus. Father, I pray, may we be people of praising, people of thanksgiving, people who, who, who realize who you are, that our life will be a life of thanksgiving. Despite we have burden, but you tell us again, Burden is lift up our Calvary. You don't want us to carry our burden. You say, come to me. You've been calling her, come to me. Put your burden, put your tragedy, put your sin, put everything to me because I am your God and I love you. I know how to solve your problem, Lord Jesus. Father, this morning we come, <clears throat> Father, 
do pray for our children because I know there's some family who are praying to you, who are crying to you for their children who is not with them, Lord Jesus. The children the Satan put their grim on. But Father, you say in your word, you will fight for us. You will save our children from the land of enemy. We claim that promise on you because that's what you said. You say our children will become disciples of the Lord. We claim that promise of you, Lord Jesus. Because Father, you are the one who rescue the perishing. We put all our trust, all confidence in you. One day, by your grace, through the power of the Holy Spirit, your children will come back to home. Not only children, all those people who are one day with you because of some disease, some tragedy in their life, they realize you're not with them. Father, I pray, you said that we will have tribulation because we are in the earth, we are in the living of good and evil. But Father, the one who are with us are more, more than the one who are enemy. We don't have no thing to fear for the future because you are Emmanuel, God with us today, tomorrow, until eternity, Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you for the praise team. We've been blessed, Father. And Father, this morning we want to pray you for Pastor Frank as he's going to open your word, Lord Jesus. I pray his word will be your word. You will put your word in, in, my, in his heart, in his mind. What you want us to hear this morning from you, we will hear it and be blessed, Lord Jesus. And Father, we pray for uh, the little one, Lord Jesus. I pray, Father, for family worship. I pray, Father, for Father will teach the children about you. They are not too small to know about you, Jesus, because our children is the church, really, and we are a family, Lord Jesus. Father, you have a plan for that church. You have a plan for really living, Lord Jesus. And I know <coughs> your plan is really living will become a house of prayer, a house <coughs> of love, a house when we could be happy together, fellowship together, without hypocrisy, without backbiting, without criticizing. Those things is not from you. It's from the kingdom, the enemy, Lord Jesus. Remove those things for us. Give us a song of joy, a song of praise, a song of take giving, Lord. That's what you, you want. You want us to come to you as we are. Even we have problems, that song said, we offer you a sacrifice of praise, Lord Jesus. Father, this morning again, I just thank you for your presence among us. I thank you for your love. will never let us go, Father. I thank you, Father, because you are Emmanuel, God with us, Lord. Father, we pray for those cities, those countries who had so much problem, Lord Jesus. But, Father, we know you said those things was happen. But when those things happen, what should be our behavior? How we should act, Lord Jesus? Father, I pray. You will, you give each of us a talent, whatever it is, let us use it for your kingdom. Let us use it to proclaim your God. Let us to proclaim your kingdom, Lord Jesus. Let us, those talents, to proclaim your kingdom, Lord Jesus, to help each other, to love each other, to be fellowship with each other, Lord Jesus. Father, again, you say your house will become house of prayer for all nations, not this and that, all nations, Lord Jesus. And Father, those countries who are fighting, people are killing, Lord, I know you have your people there. Give, keep them strong, Lord Jesus. Give them their faith. Even you, they will die in those things, but their hope is in you. And when you come, because you promise, you will come. You say, don't let our word be to a ball for what is happening now on earth. Just keep fixing on our Jesus. That's what we have to do. Fixing on our, our, our on you. And look at your wonderful face. Look at your kindness. Look at who you are, Father. Help us to come with you. Not with pride, but with broken. That's what you read for us. A broken heart, Lord. A, a country heart. A heart who desire Jesus more than everything in us, Lord Jesus. Father, so 
Thank you for your presence among us. Thank you for listening our cry, our prayer. Thank you, Father, for blessing us. Because he said in Ephesians, in Christ, we have all the blessing, all. We are not lack of anything. Praising to you, glory to you, waiting for you to come and transform our life, Father. In your name I pray. Amen. As we prepare to open God's word and hear Pastor Frank lead us, um, I believe that when we are in the presence of God, our lives never remain the same. And in the spirit of prayer, following up uh, the wonderful prayer from Sister Rosemary, I want to invite you to stand where you are as we sing this song together. Let this be our prayer as our hearts get ready to listen to God's word. Son of thy love, for Jesus who died and is now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Let's sing together, all glory. All glory and praise to the Lamb that was slain, who hath borne all our sins and hath cleansed every stain. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive again all glory and praise all glory and praise to the God of all grace who has bought us and sought us and guided our ways hallelujah thine the glory hallelujah Let's verse together. Revive us again. Revive us again. Fill each heart with thy love. May each soul be rekindled with fire from above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath to you. What a beautiful worship service that was. I was so blessed. I hope you were too. The lyrics took me somewhere to, to God, connected me to Him. There is power in music. Some years ago, a friend of mine was in the hospital 
and I went to visit him. He had stage four cancer. And he was at that place where he had lapsed into an unresponsive stage. And even though he was still conscious, they, there was not much response. My friend was a musician, and I thought to bring my guitar and to play some spiritual songs with some of the people there. And as I began to play these songs, these, these uh, well-known hymns and so on, things that, that people knew, he, something changed, a remarkable change came over him. He began to stir. And then he began to sing along. And for a brief period of time, he was able to talk to us and especially to spend some precious moments with his family. Not long after that, he fell asleep in Jesus. In another hospital, I played for a cancer patient while a group of us were singing, and the effect was so positive that the nurses asked if the church group could come on a regular basis to play for the patients. There is power in music. God created it so. Have you ever walked into church with the weight of the world on your shoulders? And you're thinking about the past seven days and all the stuff that's happened, things that you're being challenged by, financial troubles, work troubles, family relationship issues, the stuff going on in the world. And the last thing on your mind is eternal things. You're just burdened down. But then the music starts and the lyrics are there and, and you sing it and then something starts to happen. As you're singing, you're starting to feel the connection. You're starting to experience that connection with God. You see what he's doing for you, what he has done for you, what he's going to do for you, and something begins to change. And all of a sudden, the burden starts to lift off. And your mind is transported back to the throne of God. That's music. It's not that music makes God show up. God is always there, amen? amen? Music makes us show up. Our minds are often everywhere else. And sometimes music is one of those things that can bring us and align us and help us to, re to hear God's presence, to experience it. Very personal thing for me. This is something that I think has been happening for all my life, but I only became aware of it in the last few years. I'd be walking along, it's often when I'm in a quiet place, I'm walking like in nature or whatever, or I'm in my office and I'm having some quiet time with God, and, and I notice that there's, suddenly I notice that in the background of my head, whatever that means, there's a song playing, there's this tune that's just going, and for much of my life I, I thought, well, that's just my random brain, you know, I'm just remembering something, and I'm just, but... A few years ago, I began to pay attention. I was like, why is this song playing? And I, and I go and I, online and I look up the lyrics. And it could be a spiritual song, and it often is a spiritual song, but off, it could also be a secular song. But when I look up the lyrics, it's exactly a message from God that I needed to hear. It's extraordinary. It's a way that God connects with me. I don't know if it's something you've had in your life, Maybe God connects with you in other ways. I, I hear people saying, for example, that they have dreams that are very significant from God. I, I never have those kind of dreams. But, so everyone has different ways that they hear from God. And that's one of the significant ways that I have learned to hear the Holy Spirit's voice in my life. He shares music with me. Beautiful. The Bible has so many references to the key role that music plays in our lives, in worship. In 2 Kings chapter 3, there's this weird story. I never really paid attention to it until I was researching for this, for this uh, series on worship. In this story, the king of Judah and the king of Israel, if you remember Israel, uh, after Solomon, the, the kingdom split. And the king of Judah and the king of Israel are at war with their ancient enemies, Moab. 
And they're marching through the desert to get to Moab, and they ran out of water. And this is desert we're talking about. It's a really serious predicament. And the king of Judah is a godly man named King Jehoshaphat. And he says to the king of Israel, hey, is there a prophet here that we can inquire? A godly prophet, not one of those other ones. We want a, God, a prophet of the living God. Can we inquire and find out and get some help? Consult and learn God's will. And this was during the time of the great prophet Elisha. And so he was, he was a great prophet indeed. And the king of Israel said, yes, we have, there is a prophet. And so they called Elisha over. And Elisha says to them, you know, why are you going after these false gods and false prophets? Talk, God is the one who is your leader. He's the one who is your God. He will take care of you. And so he begins by saying this. 2 Kings 3, 15 to 18. Look what he says. Bring me, now bring me a harpist. I never took note of that. Bring me a harpist? And while the harpist was playing, you know, we have a harpist in this church who plays beautiful music. And while the harpist was playing, the hand of the Lord came upon Elisha and he said, this is what the Lord says. I will fill this dry desert valley with pools of water, for this is what the Lord says. You will see neither wind nor rain, yet this valley will be filled with water, and you and your cattle and your other animals will drink. This is an easy thing in the eyes of the Lord. He will also, by the way, deliver Moab into your hands. So God gives us an amazing message and a powerful miracle through the prophet, but before it happened, the, the prophet calls for music. Music is playing, and then he receives the word from the Lord. And I thought, this is beautiful. This is interesting. Music has power to soften our hearts, to soothe our troubled souls. And it opens the door for us to receive messages from God. Like, like we said, it doesn't change God. It changes us. And so today, today, as we continue our study on the seven Hebrew words for praise, words that in the English are often just translated as praise because we just don't have extra language, but in the Hebrew, they are specific words. And I hope that this word for today will prove a blessing to you as the previous two have already done. And today's word is zamar. What is zamar? Zamar is used throughout the Psalms. It means to make music, to celebrate in song and music, to touch the strings or parts of a musical instrument. It's, it's, you never see this context usually when you just read it in English, but it's there. I mean, here it is in this verse. I will sing a new song to you, O God, on a harp of ten strings, I will praise Zamar to you. It's praising God through music. Now, we just use the English word praise, but in Hebrew, it's a very different word. What was the first word we studied? Do you guys remember? Yada. Yada. Yada, yada comes from the word yad, which means hand. It's worship with lifted hands to God. It's a, it's a physical it, it response to God's goodness. And then what was the next word? Halal. I mean, we sang it. Hallelujah. Halal is the root word of hallelujah. Praise God. It's, a, it's, a, it's an evocative praise, a passionate praise that comes out of us. It shines out of us. Beautiful words. Now, today's word is zamar. It is a word that comes specifically through music. That's how important it is in the scriptures. Praise with music. Some of you hearing this were like, well, you, you're used to he hearing this because all your life, whenever you hear the word worship, you automatically associate it with music. That's, that's the normal way we do it. And one of the things I want 
us to understand as we go through the scriptures about worship is that worship is far more than, than just music and singing. There's way more to it. There's, there's, a, there's a posture involved. There's an attitude involved. There's things we do in prayer. There's thanksgiving and prayer. There's a lot involved in prayer. And now the Bible's talking about this specific one that we're very used to. We just did it now. Praising God through music. Praising God through music. And it's powerful. It's deep. Look at some of these scriptures. Psalm 7, verse 17. Look at these words. I will praise Yada, the Lord, according to his righteousness, and, he, and will sing praise Zamar to the name of the Lord Most High. Different words are being used in combination now. There's this praise that evokes our response physically, and then we're singing to God in praise. In the Hebrew, it's a lot deeper. Things can get lost in translation in the English. I remember in a previous church, there was a person that talked about a favorite song they had. Do you have, have, you ever, do you have a favorite song that you kind of turn to when you're feeling it? You're feeling down, you're struggling. Now, for this person, it was the hymn, Trust and Obey. They remember, hey, when I'm feeling down, trust God, obey what he's showing you to do, and things will work out, you know? Look at this verse. My heart is fixed, oh God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise, or zamar. This is a person that, this verse happened when David was hiding in a cave. Remember that? It's about going through rough times. And when you're going through rough times, often our response is to remember a song, something that brings us into alignment with God's will, with God's spirit. David, while he was going through challenges, while he was in a cave hiding from the murderous king Saul, what was he thinking about? He said, I'm going to sing. I'm going to give praise. Have you ever done that? When you're troubled and struggling, Sometimes people like me, maybe, I, I, my, my response of praise and singing is often after God does things for me. Okay, God, you gave me the victory. Now I'm going to celebrate. That's great. But he's doing it while he's still in the cave, still struggling. Can you praise God before it happens? Uh, can you think back in your life, hey, God, you've been so good to me. All these years, you've taken care of me, maybe just this once. I'm going to trust you before you give me the thing I'm needing and wanting, and I'm going to praise you now. That's the power of music. We can do that. Next week's word is going to be even more about that. It's beautiful. It's, it's called the expectation of praise. But yes, we can praise God even while God is working out our struggles and issues. Imagine being on the shores of the Red Sea and behind you is the enemy army and the enemy nation that had kept you and your people enslaved for generations. It seems it's the end. And then suddenly the Red Sea begins to open and God makes a way through and you walk through with your people and the, and the enemy pursues and the sea falls over them and, he, and destroys the threat forever. Behind you was slavery, ahead of you is freedom. What would be your response? Say it again. All right. All right. Yes. For when the horses of Pharaoh with his chariots and his horsemen went into the sea, the Lord brought back the waters of the sea upon them. But the people of Israel walked on dry ground in the midst of the sea. Then Miriam the prophetess, the sister of Aaron, took a tambourine in her hand. And all the women went out after her with tambourines and dancing. And Miriam sang to them, sing to the Lord for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. A response of praise. When something happened that forever changes you, changes your situation, the response is worship and music was involved. And yes, dance was involved. 
There's quite a few examples of it in the scriptures, guys. And we are completely unused to this kind of expression of worship. Let's just acknowledge that. Here we are today, the way we understand worship, especially in some denominations like ours, is very, very closed off and different from what we see in the expressions of praise and worship in the Bible. And I want us to acknowledge that because we are people of the book. We like to talk about how we study the Bible and we read these verses and then we push it aside and say, well, this is how we actually do worship. And if you go outside this box, we condemn them and say, you're worldly and you're following the devil. We got to be careful. We must follow God's word. And we'll get into what's going on in the heart because there's going to be questions. I get it. But we're... This whole series is about what is God's perspective on worship? What is biblical worship? First Chronicles 15 verse 16, David told the leaders of the Levites to appoint their brothers as singers to sing joyful songs accompanied by musical instruments, lyres, harps, and cymbals. In many churches, if you were to use cymbals to praise God, you'd be thrown out. And they, listen, listen, guys, I think I understand why. My background is Italian, and I visit Italy every year to go see my wife's family. We go there in July. And I like history, I like archaeology, and I visit. I mean, if you want rich history, go to Italy. There's some amazing things there. And one of the things we visit as part of all these different locations is cathedrals. And I go into these great large Roman Catholic cathedrals and the beautiful artworks, things that, you, that are there thousands of years. I mean, it's incredible to see. And the whole atmosphere is always the same. Shh, quiet, hush, right? That is the understanding when you're in a building dedicated to the worship of God. And when we combine that with the wrong theology... That church is a building. Is church a building from Scripture? It is not. The, the, the church, in the Greek, ecclesia, is the gathering of God's people. When we gather here, church is happening in a building dedicated to God. And it's beautiful, and I'm glad we have it. Someday we may not have this building, and we have to meet elsewhere in the forest. Church is still happening. When we combine it with the idea that church is a building, and then we get this cultural influence that when you're in a building, it's always library quiet, then we begin to get the idea that when we come together as a people, we come into God's presence, it must always be quiet, always. And then we look at the rest of Scripture and like, well, how does that, how does that come together? It's not there. Because in the Scripture, there is quiet worship and there is expressive loud worship, and there's all kinds of different things they're doing, not even just music, but there's dancing involved, there's hands going up, there's all these different things happening throughout the scriptures about worship, and then we don't do any of that, because the truth is, guys, a clashing cymbal, and the ring of a timbrel, and the blowing of trumpets, which was part of biblical worship, does not fit our Eurocentric understanding of worship. We have to acknowledge the cultural influences. As a European background person, there is much to celebrate. Beautiful classical music and all that stuff. I, I, I grew up playing classical music on the piano. That's my training. And it's beautiful. I don't like opera as much. <laughs> Some people like that stuff. But I get the beauty behind it. And the artwork and all that. That's great. But we have used that as the filter and the lens to exclusively say that's the way worship is. And we have literally ignored biblical worship. We've cast it aside. We, we, don't, we don't use it as a frame of reference. How does God see worship? Second Chronicles 5.13, the trumpeters and the singers joined in unison as with one voice to give praise and thanks to the Lord. Accompanied by trumpets, cymbals, and other instruments, they raised their voices in praise to the Lord and sang, He is good, His love endures forever. Then the temple of the Lord was filled with a cloud. 
They're using all these instruments. They're, they're singing and they're praising him. And he comes into the temple through the cloud. His presence fills the temple. Nowhere in the Bible do we get a sense of, oh, this is not the kind of worship I like and God withdraws and I don't like this. Never. You see this kind of worship and God responds because he's looking at our hearts. And back then in the Old Testament, the temple of God really was the house of God. That's where his Shekinah presence dwelled. He was actually there. And there they were praising in a way that some people today would say, that's wrong, you can't do that in the house of God. Are we following the scriptures or are we following culture? And remember, guys, this is not about forcing people to have, accept other people. If, if you don't like certain types of worship or if it's not your preference, that's okay. We want everyone to be able to worship. But what I will not stand for is when someone says, that's, that way of worship, that volume, whatever it is, that's evil and bad. You can't do that because that's not what I'm used to. Then you're starting to speak for God. Stop that. Let the word speak for God. Let Jesus speak for God. Jeremiah 31 verses 3 and 4. I have loved you with an everlasting love. You know this verse. I have drawn you with loving kindness. I will build you up again and you will be rebuilt, O virgin Israel. And again you will take up your tambourines and go out to dance with the joyful. Who's saying these words? God. God is speaking. Remember, what is God's perspective of worship? Can anyone tell me what this picture is? What is that? Okay, he's a little specific there. He said music with a treble clef. Very good. So, those blobs with the stick sticking up is... A note, very good. And what's that weird squiggle beside the two and three there, on the three? What is that? A quarter note rest. A quarter note rest. Wow, man. Okay, we got some music experts here. Very good. Well, what about that other weird little whip going and then going down? That's a. What is that between? The, it's also on the three on towards that side. What is that? Hockey stick. Hockey stick. There's a true Canadian. Excellent. Another guess? <laughs> what is that? Eighth note, rest. Eighth note rest. They're rests. They're rests. So, here's my question. Which of these things is the music? The notes or the rest? Trick question. If you had music that was just a wall of notes, a wall of music, it would be unlistenable. You can't listen to it. It would just be sound, constant sound, nothing else. You got to breathe. <laughs> Good. That's interesting that you mention human life because that's how we work. In fact, our society today is almost like a constant notes without any rest. And everyone's frantic. You know, you go to work, and work, 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 and come home, you know, and you got to make my food and I got to, you know, try to get some entertainment in and rest a bit and then, and then go back and rinse and repeat the next day. And that's our frantic pace. It's all notes. That's why the message that our church has about the Sabbath, about taking a rest, oh, it's so needed. That's what we need in life. We need that rhythm of notes and rest, notes and rest. That is literally what music is. If it's all notes, it's not listenable. By the way, what do you call it when it's all rests and there's absolutely no notes and it's complete and utter silence and there's no interaction? Death. Death. <laughs> right? You can't have all rests. It's just nothing. You can't have all notes. It's just chaos. It's when they come together, when they come together in a proper way, in a beautiful way, when the patterns start happening, you get this beautiful thing called music. Now, you may be wondering, because this brings up questions. Worship brings up questions more than anything else, I think, on most topics. You may be thinking this, Pastor, if we allow unfettered expressions of praise, like symbols, well, there's symbols right here, sort of, 
Yeah. But symbols like that, that's what they had in the, in the Old Testament. It was those kind of things. And if we had things like uh, 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 dancing even, what's next? Our kids are going to think it's okay to go to bars and clubs and they can live a worldly life. I've heard those things before, and I understand why we say those things. And you may even be wondering, but okay, pastor, fine, I, I see what's in the scriptures for music, but what music styles are okay and what music styles are not okay? Because today, we've got hip-hop and heavy metal and rap and jazz and all that jazz, all that stuff. How do we know what's appropriate for worship? And some of you work in the music industry, and you know that in the music industry, it's not about glorifying God. And so we, we, we ask these questions, you know, well, if it looks like that, and if we brought that into the church, wouldn't it also bring that influence? And so we start asking these questions, and I get it. It's important that we ask those questions. We want to protect our children. We want to be sure that the influences of the world stay out there, don't come in to the, our homes, into our church. Remember, the series is about asking what is God's perspective on worship. Before we say what types of music is okay and what types of music isn't okay, let's get God's perspective. What is God's perspective when we're singing a hymn but our heart is full of hate? Only God knows. Only God knows. Only God knows? Yes. Because if we instantly say, well, the hymn is in, and you're singing the hymn, and it's good, but our heart is not there, what about that? How about this? What is God's perspective when the devil is quoting the Psalms? Do you remember when he did that? He did that in the desert temptation. The Psalms are beautiful. They are from God. The devil takes those things and he tries to twist it. The, the problem with just judging things from the outside and saying, okay, that's in, that's from God, that's out, that's not from God, is that it completely erases God's perspective of what's happening inside. What is God's perspective on Pharisees who are strong on Bible study but weak in actual obedience? God looks deeper than we do. Human beings argue about things like which instruments are okay for worship and which music style is godly and which one isn't and which beat, which rhythm is godly and which one is satanic. I've heard these different arguments. And we get stuck on the how of worship. I know some of the stuff I'm going to say is controversial. That's okay. If it gets you thinking and going into God's word, mission accomplished. I want you to follow Christ. God told me something a few years ago that really stuck with me. I want to share it with you. As a church, we get really stuck and focused on the how of things. How should we worship? How should we do this or that? How should we um, implement so that people will come to our church? What ideas should we do so that we can get people coming here and so on? How, how, what's the methodology? What are the ideas we should use? What's the strategic plan? We get into the how. We get obsessed with the how. And God said something to me I never forgot. He said to me, Frank, stop focusing on the how. I want you to rearrange the letters. I said, what is that? And I rearranged H-O-W to another word. What is it? Who? W-H-O. All the things we do is not going to make salvation happen for anybody else in itself. It is the who. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all to me. It is the who that is the power of the church. It is the who that guides us in all we do. Who. Unless the who is the focus, the how doesn't matter much. And that's what it is with worship. It's about who we worship and it's about who you are when you come to worship. I know people that come to church and they bring a spirit of criticism and that's what they get out of worship.
When my children were younger, they gave me a handmade Father's Day gift. And I'll tell you right now, the gifts they give me for Father's Day were not Michelangelo works of art. My daughter made this thing, it, it's a, this colorful thing. It looked like a rainbow Reese's peanut butter cup. Where's Sophia? She's like, shame. Oh, there you are. Remember that thing? I still have it. A rainbow Reese's, I'll, I'll show it to you guys someday. My son, when he was small, made a, a picture with cutouts of his little hands. And he put the, the picture, the hands sideways, and then made them into a little fish. It was this bizarre thing. And I, I took it and I hung it on the wall. And I still have those things today. Because it was not the how that mattered so much to me. It was the who. My children were giving me a gift and they gave me the best they had. And that meant everything to me. Those of us who say, well, this instrument is good, this is godly, this is not godly, do you really think the best worship we have to give to God on this earth compares at all to what God has up there? Come on. It's nothing compared to the heavenly voices. Supposedly there are angels that can sing in multiple harmonies at the same time. I've heard that before. Amazing stuff. Yet God receives our worship when it's coming out of a who, out of a heart that is full of praise for him. It comes to him like a father receiving from their children beautiful artwork, beautiful music, beautiful love. It's that, that's the heart of a father. That's what God's about. So for me, it's not so much about instruments and which styles. If we have a worship with instruments and style in the ancient Hebrew, for example, we would be like blown away. We're like, what is this? If we had the worship they did in the Psalms, you, we might not know what to do with it. It's not about that. We get caught up in these not essentials. And for me, it's not, it's not a big deal. I know of people that are into music that, receive, that for them they receive it as worship that for me doesn't do anything for me. That's okay. I grew up with some heavy music. I like heavy music. As a kid, you know, you remember, you know, you know what this is? Dun, 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 What is that? Beethoven's Fifth? As a kid, I loved it. I loved that. I don't know why. There's something about power in music, and I, I, I just, I'm attracted to the loud sounds. I love thunderstorms. I have no idea why. And to this day, I listen, some of the worship music I listen to can be considered heavy metal. I'll let you listen to it if you want. There's a song from a band called Cutlass called The Passion. Marvin, you know? Nah, I see you nodding. Fantastic. Some of you know it. Wow. Tino, I told you this is a cool church. It's a powerful song. Now, some of you hearing this would, you know, would, would just melt. You're like, what is this? It's so much, it's so loud and so much. But for me, it's worship. It's worship. I've heard of Laotian country music that worship, it's Christian. It worship is Christ. And when I hear it, it's like, oh, I, it, it, I don't know what to do with it. It's not, it doesn't make sense. But it's worship for them. And if I was in that culture, it would com make complete sense. Let's not judge each other. Let's bring the who and, and focus on the who. And the how will work itself out. Listen to this quote. There are several reasons for opposing the new music. One, it's too new. Two, it's often worldly, even blasphemous. The new Christian music is not as pleasant as the more established style because there are so many new songs, you can't learn them out at all. Uh, can't learn them all. It puts too much emphasis on instrumental music rather than godly lyrics. This new music creates disturbances, making people act indecently and disorderly. The preceding generation got along without it. it is, it's a money-making scene, and some of these new music upstarts are lewd and loose. Preach it. So, is this something from like five years ago, ten years ago? No. Who said this? It's a pastor named William Romaine. He was attacking Isaac Watts in 1775. <laughs> Who is Isaac Watts? He is known today as the father of American hymnody. He gave us such hymns as At the Cross, 
I sing the mighty power of God, joy to the world, which he arranged from uh, Handel's Messiah, marching to Zion, which we sang a few weeks ago, and when I survey the wondrous cross. Nothing's changed, guys. We struggle with change. The organ, you remember that there was a day when the organ was the only instrument that was allowed in church? Well, they used to call it the devil's bagpipe. Yeah, when it was first introduced after the Reformation, it was a, it was an, a satanic instrument. What is this thing? Because they only sang a cappella. And today, people fight for it as if that's the only way God likes it. Can instruments be used for evil, church? Of course they can. Absolutely they can. The devil is a great musician. Again, it's the who. Who is getting glorified? Can the internet or movies or stories portray good things and give us good things? Sure. Can those same things bring evil into our lives? Sure they can. So whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Amen. That's worship. And the way I do that to God, I will guarantee it will not be exactly the same as you do it. And that's part of the joy of church. I get to hear different people's expression of it. By the way, today's expression was fantastic. What a worship. What a worship. And when I hear the young people doing it, fantastic. Amen. That's the principle to live by. And that, that applies, by the way, guys, to dancing. Dancing in itself is not evil. You cannot say that and follow the Bible. You can't. There are expressions of dancing that can lead to evil. Have you ever noticed, I, I think I've said this before, I, my kids, when they were toddlers, you put on a, uh, you put on a kid's show like uh, a Baby Einstein or something, and the kids start going like this. <laughs> Evil, don't dance! It's a natural response. It's a beautiful response. And in the Bible, that was a natural response to people praising God. Now, I wouldn't know what to do with dancing. I, have no, I can't dance at all. And I probably will never get into that. It's not something that I can do. I remember going to that Hebrew service I talked about it last week where there was dancing and there was part of expression of praise to God and I thought it was fascinating, beautiful. Johann Sebastian Bach, you guys have heard his name. He's often quoted as saying this, I play the notes as they are written, but it is God who makes the music. So Bach was so convinced of this that he, on many of his, um, of his works, he penned the initials SDG, on many of his pieces, it was shorthand for soli deo gloria, glory to God alone. When music is for God's glory, it's a powerful force for good. And I want to enjoy it and do it with you as a church. We're finishing up now. Let's go to Ephesians 5.19. Check this out, guys. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Like, just stop right there. What does that mean? The, the, the New Testament church would not just sing to God, which we already do, and, and I think we, and we must continue. It's beautiful. They would speak to one another. I mean, Rick, you're, you're, you're a deep worshiper, and, and I'd love to get your analysis of what this looks like. Speak to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, and sing and make music from your heart to the Lord. This is a beautiful thing. The church comes together, they're praising God together, and then they're speaking to one another. Look at this one. Colossians 3.16, let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. They're teaching each other through music and singing. I've never had that kind of worship experience. And my Bible's telling me that's what they did in the New Testament church. I would love to have a Sabbath school that talks about that. Study that. What's that about? The truth is, I don't know. It's something I want to explore more. 
singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. We know about worshiping and, and praising God and, and bringing our songs to Him. And there's also something that involves all of us bringing it all together and speaking to each other and teaching each other powerful things. Let's close with a couple more verses. A few weeks ago at Easter, we celebrated Jesus in that special way. And we had the Easter play. And if you remember, at the end, when they got up from the upper room, they were leaving, they were singing a hymn, remember? And we sang a song, which one was it? Marching to Zion, remember that? And I love this verse. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives, Mark 14, 26. And it made me think about, it made me think, that, hey, Jesus was singing. Jesus was singing. Not just us, He's singing. Did you know that God sings too? I want to leave you with this verse because I hope it carries you on its musical notes for the rest of the week. It's so wonderful. Zephaniah 3.17, The Lord your God is with you. The mighty warrior who saves, he will take great delight in you. In his love, he will no longer rebuke you, but will rejoice over you with singing. God is singing about you. He's rejoicing over you. Our God sings. I never thought about it that when I'm singing to God and I'm worshiping and I, that's all I know is that's my response to Him. But meanwhile, He's singing about you, about me. Let's be a church that praises God with all our hearts. He rejoices over us. Let your music and song arise to God each day, each Sabbath. And while you're at it, let's learn to listen for His song. Because God is the greatest musician of all. God bless you, church. Amen. Come set your rule and reign in our hearts again. Increase in us, we pray. Unveil why we're made. Come set our hearts ablaze with hope, like wildfire in our very souls. Holy Spirit, come invade us now. church we need your power in us we seek your kingdom first we hunger and we thirst refuse to waste our lives for your our joy and prize to see the captive hearts released the hurt the sick the
let the darkness fear Show your mighty hand Heal our streets and land Set your church on fire Win this nation back Change the atmosphere Build your kingdom here We pray did that song I know I've known that song for some years and I've always wished to do it he even has his banjo fantastic it's a band for called Ren Collective and they do like a Celtic style kind of worship it's fantastic that was beautiful thank you for that let's let's worship God in prayer now father we come to you in praise and worship thank you Lord for who you are build your kingdom here Lord build it among us Lord, let our hearts be open to you. Let us focus on the who of worship, who you are, and who we are as we come to you, Lord, that we might glorify you in everything we do, everything we say, what we eat and drink, everything, Lord. May it be a song of praise to you. Lord, empower us now to be your church as we go out for the rest of the week, Lord, to bring that song with us, Lord, to remember how you're singing over us with joy. Help us to spread this amazing news of Jesus to the world around us in everything we do and say. May glory come to you, Lord. Build your kingdom here. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. We don't mind uh, just taking a seat. We have some announcements today. There's actually quite a few announcements, so it'll just take a few moments. Um, first, I want to ask, is uh, Deborah Okumu here? There she is. Could you please stand up for me, Deborah? If, for those of you who do not know, that's Deborah, and she has transferred her membership here. So today we're doing a second reading to welcome her into this church body. Uh, can I just have a show of hands of all the members of this church who would like to welcome Deborah to this church? Amen. Thank you so much, Deborah. You've already been here so often, and you've already been participating in a lot of things. Welcome to be a member of Really Living. We appreciate you being here. There is also a second reading um, for someone uh, by the name of Florin uh, Zemovenu, who is transferring to the Toronto Romanian Herald's Adventist Company. This is the second reading for him as well. So um, for those of you, we've got lots of announcements. Get out your, uh, your phones, your calendars, because you're going to want to plug in a lot of these dates that I'm going to be saying to you. First and foremost, you may have been reading in the Thursday newsletter, our church bulletin, through the prayer line, that our sister, Sue Nestor, right over there, Sue Nestor, I'm sure you all know her. She and her family, unfortunately, has had to uh, go through quite an ordeal. They've lost their home in a fire, and they've lost everything. So they have been displaced right now. And in the newsletter, in the bulletin, there is a email that you can see that you can send uh, some items specifically that they're needing, as well as some funds, some meals, anything that you can do would be very much appreciated by Sue and her family. But she's also asked me to just say to all of you, thank you. She has had an overwhelming response thus far, and I know it's going to continue because it's, she's not finished. This is, there's still a process. But she just wants to say thank you, thank you, thank you for stepping up, for being there for her and her family when they have needed it the most. She appreciates your thoughts, your prayers, the food, the gift certificates, everything that you have done. She really appreciates it. Her whole family appreciates it. And if you haven't given or you want to continue to give, again, look in your bulletin. Reach out to her. Uh, reach out to Lauren at the, in our office, and they will give you the, um, the numbers, the emails that you need to... Um, uh, go to so that you can continue to support this family in their time of need. Also, I uh, would like to uh, let you know that Serving Hands is going to be going out today, this afternoon. So if you would like to help uh, this group as they go out to the most vulnerable parts of our community in some way, uh, please come to our church or right afterwards. They're going to be packing things up so that they can go out this afternoon. And now for the ladies of the church, 
I'm hoping the majority of you, all of you, have received an invitation specifically for you. And this invitation is going to be on Sunday, April 21st, and it's a baby shower. We are being blessed with another new life in this church and this grace. I don't see her here today. She's not here today. That's all right. But the shower is going to be held right here at this church, Sunday, April the 21st at 1 o'clock. So if you've received the invitation, please uh, go and, and um, uh, accept that and say, yes, I'll be here. We're asking that you bring a dish to share so that we can fellowship with one another. And if you would like to give to a, a group gift, you can do that through myself or through Nikkei or through Sasha. So uh, I encourage you to mark that on your calendar so that you know that uh, you're going to be here for that day because she would, I'm sure, appreciate your support during this time. Also, uh, Sophie Roke, sitting right over there. You wave your hand, Sophie, so people can see you. She's hosting an event, and that's going to be on April 22nd at 7 o'clock in the evening. And it's called Salad Bar and Event. Who likes having a salad? Oh, there are not many? Come on. There's lots of people like eating healthy. Traditionally, we have... And Sue? Okay. Traditionally, we have salads on a plate. But they're doing something a little different. It's called salad in a mason jar. So you can bring your own mason jar or you can get one when you come. And there's going to be a, a, a whole display of different foods that you can pack in that mason jar. And you can bring it home with you. And then you have an instant lunch for you the next day uh, for work. So that's going to be on Monday. April 22nd at 7 o'clock. Uh, that's also going to be in the newsletter, so you can um, see more information about that. The cost is $12 because, of course, there is a lot of items that you're going to have to choose from. So it's a $12 cost, but I'm sure it's going to be packed full of nutrients and healthy food for you to share or for you to have the next day. Also, on April 26th, there's something new happening. On April 26th, for the ages uh, ages eight, or sorry, 11 to 18. Oh, I'm I'm telling a lie. Uh, it's actually next Friday, ages 11 to 18, early teen and teen youth group, and they're going to be meeting right here at the church. Again, ages 11 to 18, right here at Really Living from seven. Uh, to 8.30 inside the youth room. So if you are between the ages of 11 and 18, please come on down for the first ever early teen youth group. Uh, the prayer team has asked me to mention to you for Friday, April 26th. This is why I'm telling you, get your calendars out because there's a lot of dates I'm giving to you here. You're not going to remember them all. Friday, April 26th, 24-hour prayer and fasting. Rosemary had a prayer about how this is a house of prayer, and we need to have prayer in our life for this church, for your homes, for you individually. So please uh, put that on your calendar for a 24-hour prayer and fasting session, Friday, April 26, and it's from 3 p.m. to 3 p.m. Those are the times that the 24-hour prayer and fasting will take place. Uh, if you want to continue praising God in song and in music, Heritage Green is, in, uh, is asking to come on down to their facility on Sabbath, April 27th at 2.45 to 3.15. It's only half an hour out of your day to just bring some song and some worship for the residents of Heritage Green. They appreciate music. Uh, they may not be able to sing along, but they have ears and they can hear, and they appreciate all that's being done. So if you would like to just go down and bless the residents of Heritage Green, we encourage you to do so. Those of you who uh, have been here, you know that in the last couple of years, we've had this uh, just outside of our facility here, the, uh, uh, the parking lot. We have all of these boxes set up. And they're part of a program ministry that we're in, in this church. It's called Community Gardens. Community Gardens. Key word is community. Thank you so much. So these gardens were built because there's a lot of people that live in this uh, area who may or may not have access uh, in their backyard or be able to have a, a place where they can plant some seeds and grow some uh, fresh vegetables during the summer. So if you know of anyone that might be interested in utilizing one of the boxes that we have uh, right in our facility on our property here, please let them know that they can rent a box for the entire summer. They can plant, you know, 
tomatoes, uh, eggplant, whatever it is that they like to plant. And then they can just tend through that throughout the summer and grow vegetables. And so we really want to encourage the community to be a part of this. And so I know in the church bulletin it says, you know, if you also want a box, but we first want to give the first opportunity to those in the community. So please, if you know of anyone who might be interested, let them know. Uh, there's also a Really Living survey. There's a lot of people in this church, and sometimes people move around, and, and, and we lose addresses, we lose phone numbers, emails. So please, there's a QR code at the welcome desk. Please uh, sign into that QR code and upload your information so that we have the correct information for you, your name, address, uh, all of that, so that we're, uh, phone number, so that we're able to contact you, send you church emails, let you know about what's going on in the church. Uh, just a couple more. Uh, sorry, I told you there was a lot. Uh, April 28th, the Ontario Conference is holding the first Earth Summit. It's entitled Earth Ours to Care For. If you're interested in attending that event, it's taking place at the International Centre, uh, April 28th. There'll be a video about that next week to give you a little bit more information. And now I'd like to ask Ingrid to come forward because she has an announcement that she'd like to make as well. Yes, there was a lot. Bear with me. This is the last one. I'm coming representing the Children's Ministry Church. Uh, we have exciting changes uh, to share with all parents. You've received perhaps a little pamphlet of these in your... Um the bulletin this morning. So we just want to share that we're going to have a new uh, class, the kindergarten class. Our group age of four to six is growing and growing and it's a blessing. If you don't know, the children's ministry is one of the most important, not to say that the other ones are not, but it's fantastic to see how much more kids are coming and they're the foundation, families, kids are the foundations of this church. So we're having this new class, four to six, the kindergarten. We're going to continue with our nursery, now changing ages zero to three years old, and then primary class, seven to ten years old. Also, um, the family worship. Um, we're really trying to encourage our kids to understand and also know and be blessed during the time of, of the sermon and the worship. So first and third Sabbaths, families will worship together and so they will not be a really living part two. Usually you see after the Garden of Prayer, kids going again to the children's wing for part two. We want to only have two of those in the month and two, we will encourage our families and the kids to stay here with their parents to assist to the sermon and to the whole uh, rest of the program. We're really working together with Pastor Frank and Pastor Jose to make it uh, more family friendly, kids friendly, so they know also that they're part of this church, that the sermon is for them, that the message is for them, and they're, they're part of this church. Um, also, the Really Living Kids Registration Checkout, we're uh, encouraging to, um, again, have our parents' gardens be responsible to pick up their children after Sabbath school and also in part two programming. Sometimes we have kids lingering there for a while, so we're just encouraging our parents to, again, just remember that you have your kids waiting for, for, for you there because we can't l release them without, you know, me making sure they're back with uh, a, a mother or a dad or their garden. So all of these changes also will be affected by next uh, Sabbath, April 20th. And as you see at the bottom also of this flyer, if you don't have one, there's more at the welcome desk and also the registration desk at the kids' registration. Uh, we got a children's ministry email and we're trying to reorganize with our team, Hewitt and Stephanie, myself, just to make sure that the communication and collaboration between kids' ministry and parents is there. We need your help. We need you bringing your kids on time uh, and encourage them into having that devotional at home and prepare themselves to, you know, have fun and learn more about Jesus on Sabbath. So thank you so much already for all your collaboration and your help. VBS is coming up too. I'm just doing a little tease here. Um, uh, just be at the lookout. Registration will be open soon. And the promotion videos are going to come up really soon. We're really excited about it. God bless you. Thanks so much, Ingrid. And also, um, I want to remind you that there is a potluck next week. So please make sure that you bring enough food for yourself and, for, and to share with other families as well. And remember that we are a nut-free facility, so refrain from bringing anything that contains nuts, please. Uh, also, I'd like to invite Pastor Paul, come up. Yes. Hi, folks. Uh, just an extra cricket activity. Uh, if any of you like fishing and you are interested in a fishing trip of a lifetime to Vancouver Island, British Columbia this summer... Uh, see me in the uh, fellowship hall after the service. Amen. 
Thank you. Uh, I'd like to invite Doug up. We're going to have another service here today. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> Real quick, hi everybody. This is just for the Roots Group leaders. Um, if you haven't already got one from me, the questionnaires for this week's Roots Group will be at the Welcome Center. You can just pick one up. Everybody else, feel free to look at them, touch them, lick them, but don't take any. We only have a half a dozen. Thank you. All right, thanks so much, Doug. Uh, game night tonight. Anybody who uh, doesn't have any plans for this evening, you want to come to the church for a game night, just have some fun and fellowship with uh, your brothers and sisters. I invite friends, family members, community members, invite them to come and just partake and just have a good time this evening here at the church at 7. Thanks so much and have a blessed Sabbath.